well, I guess it is time to play another game. Well, with it being my summer break, I don't really have anything better to do, but I want to surprise myself. Let's find a random way to choose a game this time. All right, a five. Let's check that with our chart here and see what we got. Sega Genesis. Hmm. But how am I going to choose which game? I've got a few. Oh, wait, I got an idea. This is an old trick here. Set my watch. 14 milliseconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Alright, what do we got here? Hey, Jewel Master. I remember this as being a pretty decent game back in the day. Let's give it a shot. Sticking the game into this mess, I'll be glad if it even turns on. Jewel Master has a classic hero warrior story, right out of Joseph Campbell's playbook. The land of Mythgard is under attack by the Demon King, Jardine the Mad. It's up to the Jewel Master to save the land using his various powerful rings that he collects along the way. Combining the rings will teach him different spells that he can use to fight his enemies. The rings were created by 12 masters, who <laughs> you're never gonna hear about in the rest of the game, so they probably don't matter. Each of the rings represents one of four main elements, fire, water, earth, and wind. Presumably these elements represent something to do with those masters who you never hear about again, so frankly I don't know what to tell you. But let's boot it up and see what she can do. Hmm. Something doesn't seem right here. But why is it so shaky? I don't know why, but this is really getting on my nerves. I can't take this anymore! I feel like I'm gonna have a seizure! What if this is what all those warnings in the game manuals are about? I don't want to wake up in a hospital, so let's sort this shit out. Whoa! What the hell was that? Well, I've wiggled every cable, so it's just gotta be this 32X. This thing has got to go. Well, that fixed the problem. And the colors seem normal, too. I guess those extra 16 bits just couldn't fit into Jewel Master. Your goal in this game is like most side-scrollers. You're gonna proceed through a level, fight a boss, and move to the next area. You have a variety of skills that you can unlock by combining the different rings that you pick up along the way. Different combinations of rings will give you different abilities that might suit your situation. Which spell to use is entirely up to you. Of course some work better in different circumstances, but this game gives you a lot of freedom to choose whatever feels right for you. And with the exception of a few areas where you might have to change to some jumping skills just to navigate the map, it really leaves most options in your hands. Even spells that may seem weak early on can prove to be very powerful later in the game. This earthquake skill freezes even people flying in the air. Experimenting with different ring combinations will show you early on that opposing rings cancel each other out and they wind up doing nothing. But this is only true until you've finally gathered all of the rings. When you put the opposing forces on each hand, you end up being able to create the very powerful Blade skill. This is the most powerful skill in the game, and can defeat most enemies with only a couple of hits, even very powerful bosses. But you'll have a ways to go until you get all of the rings on your fingers. Speaking of fingers, check out this guy's pinkies. Man, I wonder what he's using that for. 
No surprise he thinks he has magic powers. Another thing is it clearly shows on the cover art that he's wearing four rings on one hand while he's getting pimp hand strong against that phoenix. But in the game, you can only wear two per hand. But this wouldn't be the first time box art wasn't a good representation of a game. Look at this Herculean warrior on the demon sword cover. It's like Kevin Sorbo meets Conan the Barbarian. But obviously in the game, you're some sort of ninja or samurai. You've even got throwing stars, and you're flying through a forest of bamboo. I guess they figured American audiences hadn't heard of ninjas or wouldn't sell here, but man, ninjas are probably bigger in America than they are in Japan. Or how about Alicia Dragoon? They have her rigged up like some sort of Valkyrie warrior on the cover, but in the game she's clearly drawn as a manga-style character. I guess the advertisers figured Americans wouldn't have understood the game if it had anime in it back then, but I'm, I'm really getting off topic now. Since Jewel Master was made in 1991, it was designed to be played with a standard 3-button controller. But man, wouldn't it have been awesome to be able to play with a 6-button controller? You could have mapped as many as 4 or 5 different abilities to use all at one time. That would have been a great feature to have in this game. But unfortunately, you're stuck with what the technology was at the time. So unless they reboot this game for a new system, this is what you gotta work with. A really nice feature about this game is that it gives you a lot of leeway to map the rings to whatever hand you want. So you have a degree of choice even over the game's controls. If you want the B button to do the wave attack, you just have to put the appropriate rings on the right hand. Downsides about this system are that the wind element rings, the gray rings, they end up being some of the most valuable ones. By themselves, these wind rings all give you different maneuvering abilities, like a double jump, jumping higher, or walking faster. But you also like combining them with some of your other rings because they allow you to fire attacks much more quickly. Because of this, you're going to be going in and out of the item screen more often than in a Zelda game. I usually don't have any problems with the controls, except for this one time when I was fighting Jardine the Man. Just can't get this barrier spell to cast. Remap it, take it off, put it back on, try it. Come on! Ugh, there it goes. Jardine's so powerful, you can barely afford to get hit by him, but just can't get the spell to cast properly. Come on! Oh. oh. Shit. He said Jardine was mad? Well, I'm fucking pissed! Every time you die, it sends you to the beginning of that map. So that means you have to walk your hacky ass back through that castle again. Every area, get beat up along the way. And you can only hope that by the time you get to Jardine, you still have enough life left to fight him again. Alright, all the way back, past the birds. Now we gotta go, go back up the stairs again, the guys with the balls and the chains. Pass more birds again. Fight the incredibly phallic monster. Fall down the hole against the giant grasshopper things. Let's get past all this stuff. The old double jump trick. And go across the bridge. And ride, ride the magically levitating wooden block. Fight the blue phoenix again. Statues. Statues. Um. Okay, I'm back again, but I'm not fucking around this time. I did it! I did it! I finally beat Jardine the Mad! I've been playing this game so many times, and I finally beat him. Oh. There is no mention in history of the battle waged between the Jewel Master and the forces of evil. Way to really say fuck you after all that hard work.
All in all, Jewel Master is a pretty fun game. Some people might say that the levels aren't very long or complicated, but the gameplay is really enjoyable and the music is phenomenal. You're probably going to feel really frustrated at several points during the game too, because some of these boss battles you just need to know what you're doing before you go into it. And unless you know the trick, you're going to die a lot. But once you've figured it out, it's a breeze to pass through them. If you see this game somewhere out on the shelves, pick up a copy. You're going to enjoy it, you're going to have fun. Even though it's a short game that you can only beat in maybe an hour or less once you know how to play it, you're going to have a good time.